In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. It's just like he said. My, my intention tonight is to exalt and magnify the Lord through his word and by his works. I, I plan to boast on the Lord tonight. Uh, tonight my goal is to declare to you and to persuade you that revival is not coming, but it is indeed here now. Amen. I, I want to encourage and, and convince you that now is the time to make haste to the harvest because souls are hanging in the balance. Every soul counts. Souls count. Every soul counts and people are waiting. I, I want you to know that cities and, and towns are bursting at the seams with souls that are searching. God is willing to use you, and, and the Lord God is with us. If you believe that, someone clap your hands unto the Lord. Our bishop preached powerfully under the anointing at Virginia Kemp this year. And he preached and said that we ain't seen nothing yet. He, he said that we can uh, focus on all the negative things happening in our cities and in our world. But he's going to focus on the fact that revival is not coming down the road, but it is here right now. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 20 and 21 says, And I said unto you, You are come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God doth give unto us. And behold, the Lord thy God has set the land before you. Go up and possess it. Go up and possess it. it. Says, as the Lord God of thy fathers has said unto thee, fear not, neither be discouraged. And the backdrop to this story here is a story of the 12 spies. The Bible tells us the 12 spies were sent in to the promised land by God through Moses. For the purpose of bringing back reports of the land of Canaan that was promised to God's people. The Bible says that uh, two came back. Everybody say two. Two came back with a good report and ten came back with an evil report. Can I tell you any report that is contrary to what God says is an evil report. It doesn't matter who it comes from. It doesn't matter what their knowledge is, their skill, or their profession. If it is contrary to the word of God and what God said about you, his purpose for you, his plan for you, who you are, who you will be, then it is an evil report. It doesn't matter what the majority says. But I'm not here to focus tonight on the evil report. I'm going to talk about the good. It's important to note that God didn't need the report. God didn't need that report. He knew what was in the land. My God, he, he promised it to Abraham many, many, many years before. He knew what was in the land before he created the land. God didn't need to hear the report. He, he knew who was in the land. He knew what was in the land. He knew that two would bring back a good report. And he knew that ten were going to bring back an evil report. Somebody say, God's not concerned about the majority. He wants to know what you got to say. He, he wants to know what you say, Sister Shy. Here's why. Here's why. The, the response of the reports determined what God did next. I'm going to say that again. The response of the people that heard the reports, the evil and the good reports, 
determined what God was going to do next. God didn't need the reports. He just wanted to see what the response was going to be to the reports. Unfortunately, their response was wrong. They were on the very border of the promise. They were on the border of Canaan, but they dared not enter it. Why? They had forgotten that God had led them out of Egypt. That he had kept them in the dangers of the desert. That he had given them water out of a rock. And he gave them manna from the sky. And he gave them his law from the mountain. They forgot all of that. Off of one report. Let's walk this backwards. He, they had forgotten that God gave them his law. So they had forgotten relationship. Has God been faithful to anybody in here? They had forgotten that God had given them manna and water. Has God provided for you? They had forgotten that God had kept them in the dangers of the desert. Has God shielded anybody in this house? And they had forgotten that God led them out of Egypt. Has anybody in here been delivered from a life of sin and destruction? As I said, I want to focus tonight on the good report. So let me start with this declaration here. I claim, my family claims the city of Franklin, Virginia. (laughs) Oh, yes. Let me declare it not just to you, but let me declare it to the atmosphere. I claim the city of Franklin, Virginia. That's my city. We claim this city for the kingdom of God. I'm going to give you three points here tonight in the process, things that we have experienced in the process of possessing the promise. Firstly, There's got to be a change of mindset, a change of the way that we think things got to be, they are going to be done. In the first few weeks of launching this work, I had a dream. Everybody that knows me close, I know I love to fish. Amen. Talk Brother Robin. I love to fish, praise God. In this dream, I, I, I had a dream that I was... I was fishing with this man that I watch on YouTube sometimes as a fisherman. In this dream, I'm, I'm with this guy, and we are driving down this kind of uh, paved road, and we look out, and he drives past this beautiful water. I mean, it was pristine. The water was glassy. Uh, the beautiful trees around it. The water was right up to the bank. And I was so excited. I looked at this guy. I said, Richard. I said, oh, man, we're going to kill it over there. I was like, man, I can't wait to get my ride in the water. And he looks back at me and says, ain't nothing in there. I said, what? Man, look at that water. Man, it's perfect. You know it's fish there. He said, ain't nothing in there. He said, I'm going to show you where the fish are. He said, the fish are right over past this water back here in the corner. He said, it's a spillway down there. He said, all the fish come out of this body of water and get trapped in this body of water here. So he said, I'll show you. Pulled the car over and we're walking through the woods. I mean, it's overgrown. It's a mess. It's a mess. Weeds and stuff and we're climbing through and I'm confused. And when we get back to this little body of water, the, the water was probably about a third the width of this platform. Little bitty pool. But when I saw it, I saw that there were so many fish in the water that the fish were on the surface turned sideways. And I looked at him in shock. I said, Richard, we we can't even fish like this. How are we going to cast our lines in? He said, just watch. 
He took his rod and his line and he dropped it straight down beside the fish that were on the top. And as soon as he dropped his line to the bottom, his rod being that he pulls up these massive fish through the other fish. In the dream, I'm sitting there and I heard in, in my mind in the dream said, it ain't going to happen the way you think it's going to happen. It's not going to happen exactly the way you may think it should. What am I saying here? Numbers, numbers 13, 1 and 2, out of the same text, God gave the word to the man of God. The man of God gave the instruction to the spies to go. What I'm trying to tell you tonight, church, is if we will follow the vision of the man of God, if we will submit to the instructions that are given, God will do just what he said. I don't know about you, but I want the same anointing in Franklin. I want the same favor and blessings. I, I want the same favor of God on my house. I, I want the same anointing in Franklin. I don't want to go get a new thing. Ain't no need reinventing the wheels. You see what we got here. You see what God is doing. Do it God's way. Hallelujah. I don't just want it, what we got here. But I want it in greater measure. I want it in greater measure. Anybody want it in greater measure? Hallelujah. I want souls saved. I want deliverance. I want healing. I want apostolic power and apostolic authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Secondly, in possessing, there will be adversaries. And opposition. 1 Corinthians 16 9 says, For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. A few months ago, I, I met a lady in evangelism and uh, I went to it. She invited me to her home. I went by and began to talk to her about the Lord and began a little conversational Bible study with her. The lady was very pleasant, very nice, and she went on to tell me uh, how she hadn't been in church for a number of years, but she, she, she grew up kind of in holiness, and, and she had the Holy Ghost, and would tell me how she spoke in tongues and such, and I was rejoicing with her and praising God and things, and uh, I, she let me begin this Bible study with her once or twice, and and, and, and eventually, we get to a Bible study about uh, water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and she, I asked her if she understood and if, if it made sense to her. And she said, yes. And she said, well, yes, I, I definitely want to do that. I, I see I need to be rebaptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I said, well, praise God. What we're going to do, I said, I'm going to go home and, and, and talk to my wife. And we'll get it scheduled. And we'll come here and pick you up and take you back to Chesapeake. And we'll baptize you in Jesus' name. Well, Got everything all scheduled, and I had a kind of awkward feeling, and, and eventually the woman, uh, I had scheduled it for a couple of days out, and I called the lady, and, and, and she told me, well, you know, I, I, it was raining yesterday, and now I'm hurting, and I don't, I don't think I want to do that now, and I said, okay, I understand. She said, but we can continue with Bible study. I said, great. Well, praise God. The lady decided not to get baptized. Well, uh, the next night, I'm in the bed about midnight. And, and, and laying there uh, talking to my wife and uh, about to go to sleep and, and the phone rings for my wife and, and when the phone rings I see it popped up Franklin and, and, and so I say hey we got to answer that probably one of our folks a lady uh, my wife answers the phone and, and when she answers they're just screaming on the phone I mean blood curdling screaming on the phone shrieking calling on God and screaming my name. Where is Clarence? Where is Clarence? Where? And I told my wife, I said, I know who that is. I know this lady. And she's just going off, screaming, 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 crying. Then she begins to make some sounds and speaking in some sort of tongue, but it wasn't holy. Amen. And because right after that, then she began to curse. There is God. So, 
So the lady is screaming and crying and cursing and saying, where's Clarence? Where's Clarence? He, he, he's got to get out now. He needs to get out now. Get out now. He's in danger. So I told my wife, I said, just put on mute for a second. I said, go ahead and tell her that we're fine and, and thank you. So my wife tries to tell her and phone dies. Never got a chance to tell her. Well, I began to feel something didn't quite feel right. So we got up, rebuked the spirit of fear, went and prayed over our family covered our home and went to bed. Get up the next morning and I saw that I had missed a couple calls from this lady a few minutes before she called my wife and, and I heard these voicemails and, and these voicemails it's the exact same thing, the screaming and, and cursing and speaking in some weird language and, and she goes on to say in the voicemail she says, you have come into a den of danger. Get out now. They're going to kill you. Get out of here now. You don't know what you're up against. Huh. Well, we rebuked that. <laughs> and went on back to Franklin. <laughs> Sometimes you got to rebuke and keep moving. Because the devil is a liar. I, I said the devil is a liar. Oh, that's proof. Uh, whatever he says, that's proof that you can't. That's proof that you won't. So we go back out, Franklin, the next day. Don't have time to go into this, but God performed a miracle on the street and opened a man's eyes that was losing his vision for months. God opened his eyes right on the street. Right after God did that, we went back into evangelism, and I stopped at a little corner store. Stopped at a corner store doing some evangelism with a man out in front of the store. There's nobody else at the store there. We're standing at the door. While we're there talking about the things of God for about 10 minutes, a truck pulls up. Won't go through all the details, but two men get out of the truck, and, and, and they go into the store, and then they come back, and then they go back into the store, and, they, and when they came out, they looked at us, and they said something. But I had a mask over his face and yelled something. I thought he was just saying, what's up? So I said, what's up to him? And he goes back in and comes back out, goes back in, and they pull off, squealing tires. Well, unbeknownst to me and the man that I'm talking to, these gentlemen just came in and strong arm robbed the store. The police show up and all these things that happen. When this is going on, I thought to myself, here comes the enemy. As soon as the enemy comes, he says, see, told you. They don't kill you out here. Look at that. I tell you, Satan is a liar. <laughs> Satan is a liar. <laughs> He's a liar. <laughs> because my God shielded us. Uh, Psalm 34, 7 says, the angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. And Isaiah said, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And, and my God has put a hedge around me uh, and my family. And, and every spirit uh, that opposes the church uh, must come down. Uh, let me declare to this church tonight that until God is finished with us, uh, we are invincible uh, in Jesus. Uh, somebody worship God. Uh, Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Third step here in possessing the possession is to expect just what God says. Put those first photos there for me. Two months ago, met this young man. His name is Anthony. And I met Anthony, he was bound by depression, anxiety, fear, violence, and confusion. So I began to talk to this young man and try to minister to him once or twice while I was there. I began to pray for him. And this young man was no doubt under demonic influence. I, I won't go as far to say that he was possessed, but he was most definitely 
under demonic influence. I, I saw some things while praying for this young man I'd never seen before. I saw this man's body contort in ways that I've never seen. I literally saw his body turn into a candy cane. I, I saw his, his eyes go completely white. I mean, look like two golf balls in his head. But God, God came in. And what God did, God delivered this young man. This young man fell to his knees in prayer. He pulled a pistol out of his pocket threw the pistol on the ground uh, repenting of his violence uh, asking God to forgive him don't you tell me what God can't do don't you tell me what God won't do doesn't stop there got him scheduled for a Bible study I said I want to do a Bible study with you on the Pentecostal experience the next day, I went back out to Franklin, took her to a restaurant, sitting there with him in the restaurant. And, and before I go in, the Holy Ghost kind of says to me, say, just say, listen. What the Holy Ghost said, listen. See, sometimes we'll go and we, we got the whole thing planned out. But God just said, listen. Took this young man in the restaurant, and for four hours, he poured out his life. He poured out his problems, the things that he's gone through in his life. And throughout the conversation of four hours, he would stop and the Lord would give me some scriptures that would minister to that particular situation in his life. At the end of the Bible study, about four hours later, he looks at, I pulled out the experience Pentecost Bible study. He said, oh man, my bad, I'm sorry, well, you didn't even get to do the Bible study. I said, no. So he picks up the little book and he reads the verse right on the bottom. Acts 2.38 says, And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I gave him a two-minute Bible study on Acts 2.38. He said, Wait a minute, you mean to tell me that me having faith in Jesus Christ and me being baptized in his name will wash away everything I just laid out for you in the last four hours? I said, You better believe it. He slapped the table. He said, Let's go. Let's get it done. Done right now we took him back to the hotel baptized him in Jesus name that young man set up under the water speaking fluently in other tongues as God filled him with the gift of the Holy Ghost look at that look at that look at that don't tell me what God won't do I said it's just like he said Hallelujah. Next group of pictures there. I want to introduce you to this beautiful Hindu family. Praise God, this is the Patel family. Met this wonderful family about a year ago. She's a hotel owner out there in the city. Very kind lady. Well, praise God. I tell you, sometimes, you know, we'll see people, and we'll get intimidated. Well, they don't want to hear nothing about Jesus. They got Buddhas in their house and Hindu statues and everything, man. They ain't trying to hear nothing about Jesus. We won't say nothing to people. Uh -uh. Oh, no. We got to change that. Whosoever will, let him. Whosoever will, let him. <laughs> After about six, seven months, we get to spend time with her, interacting with her, letting our kids play with her kid, giving them little Christmas stockings and things that the church gives, just loving on them. Began to draw closer. My wife met her. She invited, she said, you know, we don't have any family or friends out here, but I, 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 I want to invite you all to come to my son's birthday party. He's never had a birthday party before. We'd like for you all to come and be with his birthday. He said, we'd love to. He said, God is opening a, a door here. Praise God. Well, we go and we continue to relate to them. And she began to open herself up for Bible study. She knew what we were doing out there in Franklin. And we asked her, could we teach her Bible study? And we began to teach Jesus. She made no qualms about it. She was like, we're Hindu. We're very devout. 
she began to talk about all of her gods and their prayer and their worship and everything. And we're like, oh, well, that's great, great, great. I'm glad you have faith. Don't destroy people's understanding of God. Don't tear them down. That's where you build from. We began to teach Jesus. She said, oh, I've heard of Jesus, but we worship these other various gods. And I said, Miss Priya, I understand that there are other gods, little G. <laughs> I said, but you must understand, and every person must be able to understand that there can only be one in charge, right? There can only be one chief. She said, oh, yes, that makes sense, and I agree. She said, to us, that's Sita. I said, oh, man, got to change that. She said, Sita's the chief god. I said, well, here's what let's do. Let me teach you a Bible study about this prophet named Elijah. This prophet named Elijah, and I go through the Bible study, and I'm explaining how uh, the prophets, there were the prophets of Baal, and then there was the prophet Elijah who said, you know, if the Lord be God, let him be God and serve him. But if Baal be God, serve him. I said, let's pray this prayer. Let the God that answers by fire be God. I said, what do you think about that? The one that can show himself to do what no other can do. I said, how about that? She said, deal. Well, she came to my wife and began to tell her about a sickness that she had. She had this disease or this her blood was messed up and, and she was totally convinced and the doctors were feeling that it was a diagnosis of some type of cancer. Her son has been sick and unable to eat for a long time, and he's on medicines and things. But we began to pray, and my wife laid her hands on it and said, God is going to heal you. Jesus is going to do it. Jesus is going to show himself to you. Well, they pray. We come back a couple days later. She comes out of the hotel jumping. Mr. Miller, Mrs. Miller. The doctor says it's all normal now. Let the God that answers by fire, let him be God. Woo! She says, God did it. My wife said, yeah, thank Jesus. She says, yeah, Jesus did it. Thank Jesus. Jesus did it. This same precious lady is the one that has opened her hotel to allow us to baptize people and teach Bible studies at her hotel. Well, praise God, we continued and we asked her to teach her Bible study on salvation, baptism, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. She said, yeah. So we go to teaching about Acts 2.38. And we explain what happens when you receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And you began to speak in other tongues. And her eyes got this big. She said, wow, that's what happens. I said, yes, just like the Bible says. She says, well, here's the thing. I want to see that. We baptized the first guy that you just saw. And when we baptized him, I took a video of it. She comes out. She says, Mr. Miller, can I please see the baptism? I said, oh, yes, God, just feel this man with the Holy Ghost. He spoke in tongues. He said, can I see it? She looks at the video. She hears him speaking in tongues. And she pulls me to the side and says, Mr. Miller, please don't tell anybody. But I want to be baptized in Jesus' name, too. I want that, too. I need that, too. I said, no problem. We brought her back here, baptized in Jesus' name. Before we baptized her, three days before, she has a stroke at her job. 30 years old. We went back and said, listen, the enemy is trying to kill you because you are a catalyst. You are a catalyst in your family and in your culture, but he can't do it. For days, her hands had been locked up like this. Paralysis from the, from the stroke. When we brought her here and baptized in Jesus' name, she sits up out of the water. She raises her hands like this 
And when she begins to say hallelujah, acknowledging Jesus Christ as the God that answers by fire, God opened those hands up. God took away that paralysis. It's just like he said. God healed her little boy. That boy is eaten. That boy is off that medicine. Her grandmother said, I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. Her grandmother said, I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. Don't you tell me what God won't do. When I asked her, I said, Miss Priya, can I use your picture at church and share your testimony? She said, I would be honored. Please, perhaps somebody can be blessed and be inspired from my testimony. I don't want to be negative tonight, apostolics, but in 30 days, if a Hindu is excited about what Jesus has done, what's wrong with us? He healed me. He filled me. Sir, sir, sir. Uh, uh, no, I don't want to go. I want to go. I want to show this. Please. Uh, next picture is this group. In the last three weeks, after Bible study, we had a woman come into the Bible study, said, I haven't slept for months. I can't sleep. She said, I lay in the bed at 5 a.m. every morning. We put out the oil, said, we're going to anoint you with oil, and you're going to sleep tonight in the name of Jesus. We anointed that lady with oil. She said, I want to be baptized. We were here Sunday morning, sitting in here, and we get a text from the same family. They said, listen, this woman wants to get baptized, but when you come out here, it's seven of them that want to give their life to the Lord. Three weeks ago, seven were baptized in Jesus' name. And God filled five with the Holy Ghost. It's just like you said. Next picture. Next picture. Hallelujah. 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 This last precious man here. Big man. His name is Brother Armstead. Brother Armstead was one of those seven that was baptized. But the Armstead was baptized in Jesus' name. When he came up out of the water, God filled him with the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. Praise God. Brother Armstead right there was sitting in his truck. He got out. He said, Pastor Mel, I want to tell you something. He said, something you don't know about me. He said, my grandfather was an apostolic preacher in Franklin. Franklin had a deep holiness movement years ago. He said, my grandfather was the bishop that ordained every holiness preacher in the city of Franklin. He said, but it's time for me to do this now and get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, Pastor Miller, I want to tell you, when I sat up out of the water, he said, in my mind, I saw my grandfather who's been dead and gone for 30 years. He said, I saw my grandfather in front of me. And my grandfather said, grandson, well done. I said, Brother Armstead, I believe you. I believe everything that you just said. I said, that's a call on your life. Parents, let me tell you tonight, don't stop praying. Grandparents, don't stop praying. That grandfather's been dead in the ground for 30 years. But look what God will do. It's just like he said. The man is getting ready to leave, he said, Pastor Miller. He said, I want God to use me. I want God to get glory out of my life. I said, he's going to do it. I said, Christian living before Christian service. You keep living right. You keep coming to Bible study and God's going to use you. Three days, four days later, we're in Bible study. He comes in. I start the Bible study. I said, anybody want to testify? Brother Armstead says, I want to testify. He said, well, you know, I'm a foreman at the prison out there in uh, Brother Kelsey City, Emporia. He said, I'm the foreman out the prison. And he said... Uh, a couple of days ago, after I got baptized, I was at work, and he said, my job is to drive and transport a lot of the inmates from one facility to the next. He says, normally when I get in my truck, the radio is set to 91 something something. He said, but this particular day, the radio was on the gospel station. And he said, it's like I heard God speaking to me through these songs. 
He said, I get my six inmates in the truck. And he said, we got two police officers in the back. He said, I turned the radio on. The first song was I almost gave up. He said the second song was about the power in the name of Jesus. The next song was something about the name Jesus. He says while the songs was playing, he said he began to feel something. Oh, I think we know what he was feeling. It was Jesus. While he's sitting in that truck, he said all of a sudden somebody broke out hollering, screaming. He said one of the inmates in the back he said it was a Filipino guy. He's sobbing uncontrollably through these songs. He can't stop. He's shaking. He's convulsing. The man lifts up his hands with his handcuffs on. Turns his face to the window. Can't stop. The police officers got nervous. All the other inmates got nervous and said, this man is having a seizure. The police officer said, pull this transport over. Something's wrong with this man. Brother Homestead got up, turned the truck off, went to the back, looked at the man on the floor crying, calling out to God. He said, wait a minute. This man is not having a seizure like ye suppose. He said, that man is speaking in tongues. He said, he said, he said, I know what that is. He said, two days ago, I was speaking in tongues, and I got baptized in Jesus' name. He said, you, you, and you need to get baptized in Jesus' name. All those inmates started crying. The police officer started crying. They said, we want to get baptized in Jesus' name. Well, the Lord said, said, they told him, take us back. Take us back to the other prison. We want to get baptized, he said. Ain't no need. He said, I know a man that I can call, and he'll come to the prison, and he'll baptize every one of you in the name of Jesus. Come on, Brother Coy. I know why you're running. Run, son. Run, son. Run, son. It's just like he said. If God would do that with a man who's brand new, two days, two days, what would he do with you? What would he do with you? What would he do with you? Can I tell you, that's Book of Acts. That's Book of Acts, somebody. I'm reminded in Acts 16, 26, it says that Paul and Silas were locked in jail. Locked in jail. And when they began to worship, sing praises and hymns, Bible says suddenly everybody's chains were loose. <laughs> Can I tell you, because one man <laughs> on that bus <laughs> decided to shake off the chains, <laughs> every prisoner's chains <laughs> got loose. I'm done. Brother Kelsey, help me. Last year, last year, Pastor Jones, when they announced that Franklin Emporia was launching, Pastor Jones prophesied, preaching this text. He said, I wonder if it's just two in Bible world that will go out and come back with a report. I ran to the back and grabbed my brother. I said, I want to be one of those two that comes back with the report, with a good report. I got the report. Whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. His report says I am healed. His report says I am healed. 
His report says I am free. His report says victory. Who's report? Come on, worship. Come on, worship. Who's report? Who's report? Run to this altar. Come on. Will you believe the report? Come on, ministers. Come on. Let's respond. Let's respond. Respond to Jesus. What's your response to the report? It's just like he said. It's just like he said. Whatever the issue you are, whatever the need, it does not matter. Lord, you see my response. I'm going. I'm going, God. I believe the report. I believe the report of the Lord. What's your response? The Lord wants to know what's your response. There were two. There were two. They went into the promised land based on their response to the report. The others didn't go. The others didn't make it. They had more faith in the bad report than the good report. I'm telling you, it's just like he said. It's just like he said. Yes, 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 Lord. Many of you have been through much suffering, much suffering, much pain, much trials. The suffering was for a purpose. Some of you have been asking why, why the suffering, why so long, and God has seemingly been silent. But God hasn't been silent. If you go, if you say yes, 
He's going to show you the purpose for the suffering. Don't make the seasons of suffering for no reason. If you will believe the report, God will manifest the reason for the suffering and it's going to be worth it all. That's it. Come on. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's going to do it with you. He's going to do it through you. He can do it right now. 